This is Leo Luna of Sports Illustrated All 49ers, and I am joined here by newly signed San Francisco 49ers cornerback, Jamar Taylor. Hey, Jamar, how's everything going? And thank you for joining me today. Everything's going well, man. Thanks for having me. Of course, anytime. First things first, I saw you are doing something great for the community. Talk to me about your Jamar Taylor Life Skills Academy. Um, so it's something that my friend and I, uh, my friend Darren Wilburn, he does all my community stuff for me. Uh, we kind of actually started doing things together uh, last year. Um, but he was an athletic director at Palo Alto and uh, actually in the Bay Area. Oh, wow. And, and then now he's an uh, assistant athletic director at Cathedral. So, okay. you know, at the end of our football camp last year, we always kind of try to come up with ways of how can we make our, you know, our camp better. Exactly. And one thing we wanted to do this next year, we wanted to do something that had to do with life skills, whether it's financial literacy, um, the interview prep, the resume building. And we actually talked about putting it in a camp. Then we actually talked about doing it on a weekend, um, like right, you know, probably like in January or February, then actually doing it in a camp again for, for the students who couldn't make it, make it. And then obviously the pandemic happened. So we planned on doing it now, you know, via Zoom, like everything else right now, right? Exactly. Um, so then as we went along, we just said, hey, man, you know, what are some things we would like to, we would have liked to know at the age of 16? So we kind of started hitting the head of being 16, 17 year old girls. We started asking students that we kind of, you know, we're around students that he's around at Cathedral, students that I'm around, like when I work out. And the first thing everybody said is like, you know, I wish I know how to do a resume. I was like, dang, you know what? Like, I remember my mom used to put me at, uh, like, in job fairs. So <laughs> I knew how to do resumes, but a lot of my friends didn't. And then we talked about, like, a lot of kids don't even know how to do an interview and what to wear. And we had a kid actually reach out to us, and he asked us for, like, some money and stuff. And we were like, man, like, what if, you know, what's really wrong? We had to kind of peel back the layers a little right. bit. And he's like, man, I really don't know how to do interviews. So, like, okay, boom, we're going to put that in, right? And then... We were like, the last thing is, once you have a job and you did, you know, you did a re good resume, you had an interview, you had a job, and next thing you know, you have money, right? Mm -hmm. So we we're like, a lot of kids don't know how to save money. They don't know about a savings or a check-ins account. Right. Um, you know, you go to college, you don't know about Pell Grants or FAFSA checks, mm -hmm. or even if you have a scholarship and what it's like now that you have that lump sum of money per month and what you're supposed to do with it, how much you're supposed to save, how much you're supposed to... Um, Hey, you know, after, after you pay your bills, are you supposed to just spend it all? You know, so um, we just we just started, you know, tapping into our network, found some great people that want to be involved, and uh, that's kind of how we came up with it. That's awesome. I, I love hearing that story and definitely would love to send teenagers in high school your way or even young kids in, that are already in college because I look back myself and I'm just like, man, I wish they would have taught me this back in school looking over my bills, looking over uh, any type of capitalism uh, into investing. And I think what you have going on over there is definitely great. And I look forward to sending some traffic your way. Uh, thank you, man. We, we'll, we'll take it. I know we wanted to have, I think, 25 kids at first. We had about 12 kids show up. And um, we, we've actually been very blessed with the 12 kids that we have. Cause these students are, I mean, they're engaged from, and you know, we actually start taking like, like students that's younger, like eighth grade. Wow. Um, the maturity level of, of, of some of these kids right now, man. So we've been able to actually have, you know, more hands-on time with them um, to really get to know them. And we're hoping to kind of start like a mentorship out of it, um, something to kind of help them lead them the way, you know, the rest of their high school career. So, um, yeah, any kids that you have, um, send them our way. And uh, we're going to keep on developing this thing, hopefully to take it into some high schools and some middle schools and things like that around San Diego. That's awesome. Definitely look forward to seeing the growth in that. Now you just mentioned San Diego. I, w I went to high school here in San Diego as well. Actually, your rival at Grossmont High School. And okay, nice. <laughs> so being it's from not, San Diego, really rival, but I got you. well, yeah, n not really for you guys, but for us. <laughs> <laughs> so from being from San Diego, then going to Boise, Idaho for college and then spending time across other states in your NFL career. How important was it to stay close to home? Uh, stay in the same state during this pandemic? Um, as far as uh, the 49ers you're talking about? Correct. Uh, I mean, really, it wasn't that important. I'll I tell you that. 
California taxes suck. So, <laughs> I hear you. Um, yeah, so from that that standpoint, I wasn't really too much worried about staying in California. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm I'm down to play anywhere. I think right now with the COVID and stuff, you know, my family will probably be staying at home just to be safe because we have a two year old daughter. Um, you know, and then we'll just figure it out from there, right? Um, Makes sense. For the most part, I mean, it, it didn't play a huge role right now. Okay, perfect. Now, so you're obviously taking care of your family during this, and you're having to perform and train at the highest level. How has this pandemic changed your typical off-season or your off-season routine in general? Um, it changed it a little bit because usually I go to Miami and train for about a month mm-hmm. to kind of uh, build my base up before I come back out here to Phoenix. And I have a defensive back coach who trains like dudes like Logan Ryan, um, Shaquille Griffin, Trey Flowers, some of my, you know, Seattle teammates. Um, right. But he trains like, you know, he's trained the McCordys and Darrell Revis as well. So usually what I do, I go to Miami and then I circle back here and I get a lot of my PT work done and um, a lot of my positional work done. But um, with the COVID, I wasn't able to get out to Miami. Mm. Obviously, Florida rate, Florida's rates are pretty high, just like Arizona. Right. So um, that's the only thing that's changed. But other than that, I mean, uh, where I train at has been open. Um, and then, you know, I'm blessed to kind of have like some weight stuff at my at my house and then my mother-in-law is a track coach and then Ooh. my trainer in Florida, you know, they're, they're able to zoom call me and watch me through workouts. So, um, you know, the good thing, you know, it's, it's a park, you know, it's a park everywhere. I can always go buy sleds and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. then we have, you know, a thing called FaceTime now. So uh, it hasn't been, you know, it hasn't changed too much. And then right. my DB coach lives in Arizona. So I'm able to still get with him and, and a little bit and get, get around some guys and get some work in. Perfect. Well, it definitely sounds like you have a great circle there to where it's not affecting you too much. It's just gone a little more virtual than what you're used to. So circling back with the 49ers, you spent time in Seattle and Atlanta last season. Who runs similar schemes? I did notice Seattle did a little more man-to-man last year uh, than the 49ers. But did that take any, any role into your decision seeing that the similar schemes are there? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, we actually kind of went back and forth with the decision um, because, you know, the 49ers, they have some great guys back in that secondary. Right. Um, you know, but I think what came down to it was just the, the culture, um, right? Like being in Seattle, we had a great culture, and I think the 49ers have the same thing, obviously, mm-hmm. in winning games, and they have guys like Sherman and K1 in the secondary. Yep. Um, you know, who are just great guys. I played with K1 in, in, in uh, Cleveland for a while. Sherman, obviously, playing in Seattle. You hear about him and what type of great leader he is all the time. So, uh, Coach Sala, actually, I think that's how you say his name, he, he right. reached out to me. And when me and him just talked, I just felt like it was a good vibe. Um, I talked to the, the, the cornerbacks coach, DB coach today, mm-hmm. and another, like, just good vibe from him. So, I think it just made more sense. Um, because just the vibe I was kind of getting from them compared to just going somewhere where the GM wants you and the coaches really don't want you. Right. Um, it was kind of cool to hear from the coaches, like, hey, we watch your tape and we like, we like your tape and we want your in, you in here. So um, it just made more sense, you know, as far as, like, you know, the business move for my family, at, you know, to be honest with you. Oh, 100%. I hear you on that. And especially on the scheme there, I did watch an interview of your when you were in Seattle uh, post game against the New Orleans Saints and that's something that caught out to me is when you were talking about the culture and getting back yeah. and getting back to the next game and that's something I've seen with the 49ers ever since Shanahan has been there and Salah himself it's those defensive players love him and I'm sure you're going to love him as well so I believe you made a fantastic decision with your career and I like the confidence you have as well uh, it's not just about the scheme. You feel like you could play in any scheme in which you have shown that in your career. Yeah. So for someone who can play at cornerback, whether it's out wide in the slot or even in the box, do you envision yourself having any certain role within this defense, whether it's playing on the outside or in the slot, or is it just, you know, where, wherever fits best? Uh, I'm not even sure, man. I know they kind of said, you know, they want me to do both. I'm kind of, I think, you know, I'm at the point where obviously like when I was in Cleveland, I played nickel and corner. Right. Um, I think last year with Seattle, I obviously had to take the nickel role because 
uh, Carol only likes, you know, the tall guys. <laughs> so, right. you know, that's kind of his MO, right, since, since Sherman. Correct. Um, so, you know, I'll be down to play corner because I do want to get that stigma off me that I'm just a nickel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because, I, like I said, I have played corner a lot. Um, and I have, I've, I've done both. But I'm down to do whatever. I do understand that, you know, they, like I said, they have some guys there. K-1 has been a fantastic nickel for them. I respect his game tremendously. Um, Mosley did some great things last year, you know. But So I'm just really looking forward to compete. And, um, you know, wherever I can get in and fit in, that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, you know, so I can contribute to the team and, you know, we can try to win some games. Oh, definitely. And I, and I definitely do see yourself doing that there. I think you're a perfect fit from everything I've seen on tape, as well as your attitude and, and what you bring as far as a culture aspect as well. That, that goes unspoken in, when making decisions on players. So I'll definitely look forward to having you next season as part of the San Francisco 49ers. Once again, this is Leo Luna from Sports Illustrated All 49ers, joined here by newly signed cornerback Jamar Taylor. Thank you. I appreciate you, bro.